Hello and welcome to the episode 224 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas, a new drummer, the first concert of the last Beatles North American tour and the completion of Not Guilty are among the highlights of the day. Audition time on the 12th of August 1960. The Beatles, they had decided to drop the silver qualifier for the time being, auditioned Pete Best to fill their vacant drummer seat, playing at a Vivern social club in Liverpool. Best was interested in the band, he was serious and capable, and, most importantly, he was the only drummer that was ready to live with them for their looming Hamburg residency. He got the job. In 1961, the Beatles, with Pete Best on drums, performed at the Entry Institute in Liverpool for the 21st time and for the first of seven consecutive Saturday night events organized by Brian Kelly of BK Promotions. One year later, in 1962, the Beatles, still featuring Pete Best on drums, performed their 90th evening concert at the Cavern Club in Liverpool. In 1963, the Beatles, now with Ringo Starr on drums, had their first of six nights at the Odeon Cinema in Ladidno, a Welsh seaside resort. Also on the bill, Billy J. Kramer and the Dakotas, the Lana sisters, son of Piltrow Men, Tommy Wallis and Beryl, and Tommy Quickly. The bands played two houses, one at 6.30 and one at 8.30 pm. Fun fact, a 13-year-old Mary Hopkins attended one of these concerts. Five years later, she was one of the first artists signed by Apple, and she was mentored personally by Paul McCartney. 1964. During a party at Beatles manager Brian Epstein's flat at Wadden House in London, Ringo Starr was interviewed by Enemies Chris Hodgkins for BBC Radio's The Teen Scene. The interview, focusing on the Beatles' imminent tour of the United States, went on air on the 13th of August between 9.30 and 10.00 pm. The other Beatles, along with Judy Garland, Cilla Black and other entertainment business VIPs, were also present at the party. On the 12th of August 1966, after briefly touching on the Jesus controversy once again, plus on the usual array of boring subjects during a second press conference at the Aston Tower Hotel in Chicago, Illinois, the Beatles finally opened their 14-date North American tour. The Fabs had two shows at the International Amphitheatre in town, one at 3 and the other at 7.30 pm. Each show was attended by some 13,000 people, for an almost full house. On the bill, as support acts, there were the remains, Bobby Hebb, The Circle and The Ronettes. Before going on with the show, allow me to thank you once again for your support. If you're new here, and you don't know what I'm talking about, please visit www.simonmas.com support to check out the things you can do to allow me to keep on producing ever-improving content for our growing music community here. Most things will just require a minute of your time and nothing more. Come on, be fab and make the difference. Thank you. In 1968, the Beatles kept working at the EMI studios on Not Guilty between 7 pm and 4.15 am. George Harrison overdubbed his lead vocal track in the control room of Studio 2, with a backing track playing through the speakers, to get more of an on-stage feel to the performance. As we will see tomorrow, John Lennon was impressed enough with the results to decide to work in the annexe of the studio for the recording of Year Blues. Anyhow, after the vocal track was completed, the song was mixed down and Mal Evans took the tape away to cut acetate discs. Despite all the work Hoover took on it, the song was never released during the Beatles' career. In fact, it lay dormant until 1978, when George decided to re-record it for his 1979 George Harrison album. 
as we have said in previous episodes, one of the Beatles' takes was released in 1996 with the Anthology 3 album. Let's close the episode with a quick note about a 1969 mixing session. Between 7 pm and 2 am on this date, Oh Darling, Because and Maxwell Silver Hammer were mixed multiple times in stereo at the EMI Studios in Abbey Road. There will be more mixing tomorrow, but that's surely not all. Join me to see what else is going on. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.